So a woman's place is in the home. Her vocation is to be a homemaker. This is the world to call into Harrison Butker, a place kicker for the Kansas City Chiefs. He took his time during a college commencement to share his thoughts about his personal life and his opinions on various issues, including Pride Month, uh, COVID vaccine, and the, vo the vocation of a woman. And I want to share my thoughts on what this means. And is this the right thing according to the Bible? Before you, I, I do that, I want to welcome you to my page and say thank you for logging in. Thank you for joining me. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you love so much Christian content that's going to push you to live your God-given purpose. So I want to share the, the clip of a speech by Harrison Butker, who is at, again, a college graduation commencement. He is speaking to men and women who have recently survived the, the process and have graduated school and now are looking forward to their the next life to to adulting or whatever that that may look like this is this, this is part of the speech that Harrison shares with them ladies and gentlemen of the class of 2024 you are sitting at the edge of the rest of your lives each of you has the potential to leave a legacy that transcends yourselves and this era of human existence in the small ways by living out your vocation you will ensure that God's church continues and the world is enlightened by your example. For the ladies present today, congratulations on an amazing accomplishment. You should be proud of all that you have achieved to this point in your young lives. I want to speak directly to you briefly because I think it is you, the women, who have had the most diabolical lies told to you. How many of you are sitting here now about to cross this stage and are thinking about all the promotions and titles you are going to get in your career? Some of you may go on to lead successful careers in the world, but I would venture to guess that the majority of you are most excited about your marriage and the children you will bring into this world. I can tell you that my beautiful wife, Isabel, would be the first to say that her life truly started when she began living her vocation as a wife and as a mother. I'm on this stage today and able to be the man I am because I have a wife who leans into her vocation. I am beyond blessed with the many talents God has given me, but it cannot be overstated that all of my success is made possible because a girl I met in band class back in middle school would convert to the faith, become my wife, and embrace one of the most important titles of all, homemaker. She's the primary educator to our children. She's the one who ensures I never let football or my business become a distraction from that of a husband and father. She is the person that knows me best at my core, and it is through our marriage that, Lord willing, we will both attain salvation. So this is very interesting. It's very interesting to see his feedback and see his thought. He, again, you know, I do not understand how he feels that it is according to their vocation or in essence he's saying it's a woman's job to stay at home i didn't think this is what the the church is still teaching here in 2024 this is, is, is such a debunked and antiquated message that he decides to go like how is this okay how is this, does this make sense for him to sit here and make such a bold statement that he feels a woman's place is in the home. <laughs> and imagine how the women in the audience who have graduated must feel where they sat here and sacrificed and sacrificed time, blood, sweat, tears, and money to get a, to get a degree for someone to come in and tell you, well, your place is in the home. Don't sit there and aspire to anything great, woman. Just aspire to be a housewife and take care of your children. And, and th this is, I, I, I don't understand. I don't know what the church has become. And it's watching over the internet, watching in social media to see the state of the conservative movement, which has become the voice of the church, the evangelicals. 
which is an extension of the conservative party, they have become the voice of the church for them to sit here and say, for someone to sit here and say, yo, it's okay. (laughs) It's okay. Listen, don't aspire to have a, a promotion and to have a great career. Your aspirations is to stay home and be barefoot and pregnant. And, you know, he, he, tearfully uses his wife and his personal life as an example as to what what happens and how great that is. Harrison Buckner is a a place kicker for the uh the can't can see cheese. Let's find out what he makes uh what he makes each year. Let's let's see his contract, you know? Let's see his contract and see is is Isabella really making a sacrifice, right? 2019, he made $4.15 million. In 2020, he made $2.5 million. In 2021, he made $3.2 million. In 2022, he made $3.476 million. So is it really a sacrifice? Is it really something? He signed an overall five-year contract worth 20 about 21 million dollars 20 20 i'm sorry 20.3 million dollars so how are you so what is a sacrifice what is he really sacrificing if he's saying if his wife decides to stay home so so do you think a lot of these women who are doing this they want to go to work you don't think they, they want to be in a situation where they're able to stay home and, and, and spend more time with their children. But many times they don't have the financial flexibility, f- flexibility like you do, Harrison, for you to sit here and think it's OK for you to say that. Like, this is crazy. And, and, and what it turns back to and what it's 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 a plot from the devil to sit here and make people discredit the faith. Because what? They're going to say this Christian guy at this Christian school, at this Catholic school says that this is their problem with the church. I I don't understand how such a message was okay. Harrison is is known for his very staunch and public um, conservative anti-Biden, anti LGBTQ, anti-Pride Month, anti-COVID vaccine, and he's he's a MAGA guy. That that's basically who Harrison Buckner is. Buckner is a MAGA guy who sits here and just um, talks out of his behind and doesn't understand and doesn't understand the consequences of what he says. Imagine those who are sitting in that audience. Was waiting, they're waiting for words of inspiration, words to encourage, words to be like, yo, to, to catapult them into the next season of their lives. But you have a, a person that comes, uses this opportunity to make a political statement against the current, against the current um, president, against the current leadership. You sit here and use this opportunity to sit here and, and, to, and not to talk to the to the audience, not to talk to the students, not to encourage the students, the students, but to sit there and make a political statement. Why did he say, "Listen, women, in order for you to be able to stay home with your wives, I'm gonna I'm gonna clear out your student loans to give you a better chance of being a homemaker and living out your vocation? I'm gonna sit here and allow you to not. I'm gonna cover your student loans. I'm gonna give you each checks." To help you be at a better place of your vocation, you don't know. You don't know people's situation. It's just the the, the church. Like I, I just don't understand. Like the church. The more and more I look at the, the church, when I say the church, I'm talking about the entire the movement of the church. These vocal, the conservatives, the vocal people who, the Christians, the evangelicals, the and I mean with political parties, people in general who are quote unquote regular people that sit here and they post and they live a life that is so hypocritical of what Christ wanted us to do. So hypocritical as to what Christ called us to do. There's no love. There's no compassion. There's no empathy. 
It's just, listen, this is the, this is the law. This is my rule. This is what I feel. This is what I believe. And you, and you need to fall into line. It's scary to see the church this way. Second, you know, back to back days, I'm watching stuff on social media. I'm like, why is Harrison, Harrison Butker trending on Twitter and on threads? And I look into, I look at the speech. I'm like, wow. And this is not simply for his comments on women. The women, the, the comments on a homemaker is, I think, one of the things that, that took a, a, the, the greatest chord with me because they were in the, they were, they were there, like given the, the, the environment, given the fact that, yo, they're in the audience, they're sitting here, they're, um, they're actually women who are making, trying to make decisions as to where I'm going to work to feed my family. You don't know people's situation. It's easy from your high horse five years and 20, 20 million dollar contract to ask your wife, I'm sorry, to tell your wife to stay home. But some people don't have that luxury. They got to take care of their family. You got to take care of their kids. Their husbands don't make don't make that much. So they have to be the provider. So so. Ideally speaking, yes, it'll be great for a woman to stay home and be a homemaker and, and, and spend time raising a family, spending time with their children, spending time making their house into a home. That would be great. I think if you ask most women who are currently in the workforce or most women, period, that's what they want. I believe naturally speaking, the the natural, the natural um, order of things is that a woman should be the ones taking care of the children. They should be the ones at home and being able to do that. But sometimes that's not feasible. That's not doable where, you know what? It's it's not, hey, the wife has to make the work 40 hours and take care of the kids. There's certain home dynamics where, listen, the wife, because of the ability to earn and the responsibility to earn, the dad stays home and takes care of the kids. The dad st- stays home and makes sure the kids are good. Cause my, my wife in my in my home, my, my wife, she she works. She works hard. She works a lot. I I work from home. She makes more than I do. So what do, do you know what I do? I make sure when she comes home the kids are taken care of. I make sure, I make sure that that when it comes to the kids, I'll I'll carry the greater burden. And not once in our home has she put me down or do I feel less of a man or disrespected? Of course, I wish I can do more. I wish I could be at a better place where she could work less. I would love that. But for this season in our lives, the tables have turned. And how dare I, you know, and and, and if I, how dare I be so focused on roles and rules and regulations that I tell her or ask her to or expect from her to work 40 plus hours a week and take care of the home. There's some guys that do that. They're in that, they're in a similar situation as I am where they, with, with, where, where he, where the wife works more and she's the breadwinner and she does this. And he comes home and like, your babe, where's dinner? He comes home, work from home. He's playing 2K while the child's in dirty diapers. The house is dirty. The clothes are dirty. No. Everybody's situation is different. But someone sitting here making $20 million has no right to sit and tell people how to raise their family. You're in a fortunate position where your wife has the choice. But to be honest with you, the way he's talking, I don't think she had a choice. He told her she stayed home. But he was able to provide a lifestyle for her. I guarantee if Harrison was unemployed, if Harrison was working um, and making 50K a year, she would not be a homemaker. So before, before we talk church, let's be at a place where we sit here and think of the impact of our words. This is not the one thing he said. He said a bunch of stuff. And, I, and you know, like I said, the, the Pride Month, um, I, I, don't, 
I think I think I I, I think everybody deserves rights. I, I don't like this this gender indoctrination that's happening in in this country in this world. Don't like it, and it will not happen in my house. I I I, I think we sh- just because I don't agree with the homosexual lifestyle. I think it's not a sexual Im- immoral according to the word of God. Then, but I don't think that they don't deserve rights. Everyone deserves rights because despite not agreeing with their lifestyle, they're still a man or woman. So they have the right to have rights. I'm not going to sit here and mark and march and picket for gay rights. But I'm not opposed to them having the same rights as every other uh, group of people. That's the country you live in. This is why Christians shouldn't be involved in politics. The responsibility of a pastor, the responsibility of a president is two different things. The pastor is to govern souls and to make sure people get to heaven. The president is to govern the land, every single person in the, in the land, and be their voice and their advocate. Black, red, yellow, gay, straight, bi, whatever. That's why the state is established, in order to make sure you govern the land. So we as Christians are getting ourselves into certain places that we have no place to get. Once again, the Constitution foresaw this and said there's a separation between the church and state for a reason. So I think it's important, man. I, I, I saw this and I said, let, let, let me get on. Let me share my thoughts. Let me share how I feel and see what it goes. So thank you for listening. Don't forget to like, subscribe to my page. I appreciate all the love. Let's talk in the comments. Give me your feedback. I want to learn as well. I may be wrong. I may see things incorrectly. Women, talk in the chat. Let me know what you feel. Do you want to be a homemaker? Do you want to sit there and be at a place where you sit and you just stay at home all day? Is that what you want? Let me know what you think. But either way, thank you for listening. God bless you.